Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to Art 192, Photoshop slash digital imaging um, for the fall semester 2021. Um, today, I will be working on lesson 10 in our textbook, which covers the mixer brush tool. Um, the mixer brush tool, if you're not familiar with it, or um, is a way of turning your digital photographs into digital paintings or working from scratch to create a digital painting. We will mostly be working with the former, um, meaning that we're gonna work from photographs initially and then turn them into digital paintings. Um, it's done a lot these days um, in future uh, lectures. I will show you examples of some of the, the kinds of work that I would like to see. It's um, really kind of the antithesis of working with photographs. Photographs are about fine detail, about concentrated um, information and data that gives the realistic look. This is going in the opposite direction now, and it's creating something more impression, at least the direction that I would like to see you go is something that's more impressionistic, um, something more abstract, something more painterly. It's my feeling that if you're going to stick with a photographic look, then work with a photograph and that's it. Don't bother with, with digital painting. Um, there are lots of um, variations available, um, lots of different kinds of brushes, lots of effects that you can use. And so that's what we're going to work on today. So um, to get things started, what I want to do is show you where the mixer brush tool is. It's over here to the left. And if I click here, you'll see that there are, come on. There we go. It's right here. Now, if I have, um, if I set up a different brush or a different um, workspace, if I put essentials, then you'll see that the mixer brush is hidden. There's a bunch of them under here. There's a brush tool, there's a pencil tool, or the, there's the color replacement tool and the mixer brush tool. So it's hidden down there. However, if you switch your workspace, your desktop to painting, then you get something totally different, okay? Then the mixer brush is right here. It sits um, alone unto itself. So we're going to be using the mixer brush tool. We'll be using the eyedropper tool to pick up um, color pigments. And important to um, the mixer brush itself, we'll be working with um, especially these in, in the options menu along here for our color. And this, this little button right here, which allows you to empty um, or load the brush rather, and then this one here, allows you to, um, to clean the brush after every stroke. So, um, and then we have the option of working uh, with dry brushes or wet brushes. Um, and you can control, dial it in here, the degree of wetness, um, how much of, of the brush you want to load, heavy load, 50%. How much do you want the, the, uh, the colors to mix? With a dry brush, they don't mix. The flow, do you want it to be 100%? Do you want it to be less? Now that's because today I'll be working with a mouse to do this. And I assume that most of the rest of you will be working with a mouse. Um, however, the way that this um, tool was originally intended was to work with a Wacom tablet or one of their competitors. The Wacom tablet, if you're not familiar with it, as a tablet that's, it ranges in size, depending on how much money you want to spend from six by eight, eight by 10 to quite you know large, 20 by maybe 24, 20 by 20. Um, they can get kind of pricey. Um, they can be you know a couple hundred dollars to several hundred dollars. But what they are intended to do is to um, simulate traditional um, brushes and pencils that when you press on the stylus that comes with the, the tablet, um, you get a heavier stroke. You, it also, um, the angle which, it, which you, um, you make your mark is uh, affected just like it would be with a real paintbrush or real pencil. Um, 
So that's the way it was intended, but you can, and you have all the settings to work with a mouse. Now I'm pretty awkward with working with a mouse with this tool, um, but for our demonstration purposes today, that's what I'm gonna use. And the reason that I'm awkward with it is because I'm left-handed, but I use my right hand with my mouse. Um, what you're looking at right now, that's a, is a, a two-parter. We have a, an artist's palette and some tubes of paint. And what we're going to end up doing today is we're going to um, use different brushes um, to create different effects. And you'll notice that we have different kinds of brushes to the right that look kind of like an airbrush and some are a little bit more smeary and oily, kind of painterly. Some are a little bit more like um, pencils or markers. And then you can see over to the left on the palette itself that um, it looks, the, the little splotches of paint, dabs of paint look like they've been um, mixed together or smeared. Well, that's what you can do in this program um, is to actually take different colors and mix them together. And it gets a little tricky from time to time. Hopefully I won't make too many mistakes today. Um, but um, it's kind of a fun tool. You can always undo. You can always work on different layers and decide if you want to keep parts of it or delete them. Um, my belief is to work in a non-destructive way and to work on mu multiple layers. Um, probably, it, I don't know if it'll be this Wednesday or next week. There are a couple of videos that I'll want you to watch. Um, I will be showing them in class, but they're already recorded and in modules. Um, they're taken from lynda.com. Uh, and again, if you go back to my original orientation video, you'll see that all of you have access to the, um, the lynda.com videos if you go through the LA County Public Library. Um, anyway, this is the, the first part that we're gonna work on today. Then in addition, in addition to that, we have um, a landscape image here. Here's a photograph of a you know nice little landscape with some looks like California oaks or something like that. Looks like they've already kind of painted it into it a little bit, but it's a, it's a photograph. And then when we're done with it, using the brushes that they provided, we're going to go ahead and make it look something like this. This is really the direction that I'm you know hoping that you guys will take when you uh, work on your assignment creating a digital painting. Start from a photograph and then end up with something very painterly, kind of interesting looking. Okay, so we're going to start with this particular. Uh, let's start with the palette here, or start palette. And we're going to try to end up with something like this. Good oak. So I'm going to start here, and you can see that I've already used the eyedropper to collect some red. And the way I got the red was just going over to the eyedropper up here and clicking right on one of the tubes of paint here. If I click on the blue, you can see that it, um, blue uh, has been entered into our foreground color. Um, I'm going to go back to the red here. And then once I've selected the color, I'm going to go back to our mixer brush right here. And you can see that the color has been picked up here. I'm going to leave these two buttons um, selected. And by default, it usually selects um, moist or wet, usually a wet. I'm going to go with dry right now. And um, over to the right, I have brush settings visible, as well as in the lower left hand quarter of our palette, I have the brush, all of the brushes that are available to us. And there's tons of them. There's more than I have ever experimented with, but that was something in the months ahead that I plan on doing. Um, I plan on working with digital paintings quite a bit. The first one that we're going to use is the first one that's up here. It's a 30 pixel soft brush here. And I'm going to come over here and I'm just going to above the tube of paint, I'm just going to click and drag and you can see it looks sort of airbrushy and painterly and you click and you drag. And um, if you're computer is fast enough, it will, there will be very little lag time. Okie doke. 
So the next one that we want to work with now is going to be the loop um, tube of paint. So I'm going to go back over here and I'm going to select with the eyedropper, a uh, nice blue in here. I'm going to go back to our mixer brush. And then over to the right, I'm going to select the one that's down here. I think it's the um, second row and it's the fifth one over, it's the pencil, okay? But I'm gonna switch, instead of working dry, I'm going to work wet and see what it does. Now, um, one thing that we're working on right now is you'll notice that in our start file, <clears throat> um, we have three separate layers. We have one layer, with the little circles on it that tell us where we're supposed to put the dabs of paint. We have another layer right here that I started to work on, which is the paint mixer, which is separate from the background image, which is the image, the photograph of the paint brushes, the paint tubes of paint, and the artist's palette. I think it's advisable to work on separate layers, as I've mentioned several times before. So that's what we're doing. But when I start to work with this um, new brush here, watch what happens when I paint. It looks very similar to what I did a moment ago. The edges are not as soft, but if I do something a little bit different, just one thing different, if I come back up here, you notice where it says uh, a little uh, checkbox that I can have sample all layers. Now watch what happens when I use this brush. When I click and I drag, notice that it starts off very light. And the more I paint, and if I let go of the mouse and I paint again, it gets darker and darker. But when I come back over here and I draw, it's very light. That's because it's mixing with the background color. The background color is white. So it's actually taking the blue and mixing it with the white paint of the, of the background. And, and it's smearing it as if they were wet oils working together. So there's that one. Let's try a different one down here for the yellow tube. So I'm gonna, again, switch to the eyedropper tool. I'm gonna to pick yellow, <clears throat> come back up to the mixer brush. <clears throat> I'm gonna leave it wet. Um, but what I want to do is I'm gonna to switch to, um, I think I'm gonna use this one down here, this hard yellow here. So now I'm gonna paint here and you can see that it just, hard, hard yellow, okay? And it has kind of smeary edges. It's not, if I zoom in a little bit, you can see a little bit better how each of these brushes were behave, behaving considerably differently than the others. So it's something, you know, in real life, I don't, when I used to paint as an illustrator, I didn't use that many brushes, not as many as they have here. I would only use maybe a handful of them. They have a whole slew of existing brushes and you can import and save brushes. And that's what we're going to do in a minute is we're going to um, import a whole slew of brushes that they provided for us. So the next one that we're gonna work with is um, the green here. And um, we can try a different brush if we want. Um, I'm gonna kind of depart from the, the book a little bit and I'm gonna pick a color of green in here. And then I'm gonna go back up here. And I still have, uh, I think I still have um, the sample um, all colors suggest, selected here. So let me pick an entirely different brush down here. Um, let's just uh, randomly, I'm gonna pick this one here and see what that does. Whoa, look at how big that is. So if I hit the left bracket key, it will reduce it in size, or I can come over here and I can reduce it in size um, from the brush settings and I can slide it and make it smaller and make it bigger. Come over here like so, and then click and drag. And notice the, the different effect that I get here. Now, if I turn off again, sample all um, layers, it will become very different. Notice that it's smearing and it's building color much, much quicker. 
So let's go ahead now. And now that we've experimented with um, the different kinds of brushes and acquiring colors from the actual photograph, the tubes on paint, I'm going to come over here and I'm going to turn off the, um, let's go back here. I'm going to turn off that feature of sample all layers, which I just did. And now I'm going to come back here and I'm going to use, um, I think I'm just going to use the hard, the 50 um, pixel hard brush and I want it to be wet. And um, I need to get the, the red color again. Okay, and we're going to leave it wet. Let's come back over here. And let's select the mixer brush tool. Okay, and I'm just going to leave it. Um, if I do that, that clears it. So let me undo that and see if it comes back. No, it won't do that. So I got to go back and I got to select it again. So select that color. Nice bright red from here. Go back to the mixer brush. Uh, let's pick that up now. That loads the brush. It will clean it and it will load it. Make sure that I have the, the middle layer selected and I'm going to come back over here. Hopefully, there we go. And just begin to kind of smear and paint. So it's working wet into wet. Now what I want to do is I want to mix a blue with the, the red. And for those of you who have worked with any paint or any color at all in your 2D design class or painting class, when you mix the red with the blue, you get kind of a purple or a violet color. So I'm going to switch <clears throat> and pick up, there we go, the blue. And I'm going to switch over here to our mixer brush. And now I'm going to come back in here and I'm going to turn off um, where it says clean brush after each stroke. I'm going to turn that off for a minute and see what happens. Now when I paint in here, notice that when I paint outside, it remains blue. But when I paint in here, it becomes a different color altogether. If I turn that back on and I paint, okay, you'll see that it's mixing it together. Okay. Now, when I come over here and I paint, no, I don't want that to happen. I'm going to undo that. I'm going to come back over here and I'm going to let me undo a few times. Okay. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going, I don't want to clean the brush. Um, I'm going to try something. I'm going to make it very wet and see how that works a little differently. Now, when I paint in here, you notice how it's taking that blue and it's turning it into more of a violet color in here. It's mixing with the red. Okay. Now, let's paint outside. And it's an entirely different blue than what we started from over here. Okay. Let me undo again. Let's try some other examples here. Let's clear that. And now let's go back in and paint. And let's paint in here. I'm going to undo again. Let's do, let's go back several steps. Why not? Let's bring that back. Let's paint in here. And let's try to get a really kind of violety color in here. So if I click from here, now I paint over here. Notice how it brings those over with me. That's with these guys turned off. So depending on you know, the settings that you have up here, whether you clean the brush or you make sure that it, that it cleans after every um, time you release the mouse will determine, and also whether you want wet, very wet or dry, will determine what kind of um, uh, mix that you get between the two. So if I click in here, I click in here, you can see how different the colors are. I click in here a little bit, it's nice and violet. -y. There we go. So now I'm going to click over here. And you can see that it kind of brought that in. Now let's try some other ones. I'm going to come over here. 
And let's try um, mixing blue with um, yellow. So I'm going to go back over here and I'm going to select with the eyedropper the yellow. <clears throat> and I'm going to come over here and I'm going to select the mixer brush tool. And I'm going to paint inside the next area here. You now, a nice big swath of, of yellow. And now what I want to do is I want to mix yellow with the red. So I'm going to come back up and I'm going to take um, eyedropper and I'm going to select the red from up here and move over, select the mixer brush tool. And let's paint inside here. And you can see that it's turning orange. That's precisely what I want. So now I get an orangish color. If I make sure that this does not refill and I paint it again, now it gets the, the color will, will be dominantly the red. If I make sure that it, that it picks up again after each one, then it will be even more orange when I'm done with it. So let's try again here. Let's go and do a couple of times. Let's try that again. I'm gonna, I don't want it to pick up again. And I'm going to paint in here. And it looks pretty, pretty yellow, you know, orangish, but it, it's dominating with the, the red. So it depends on the look that you're going for. I'm going to go back here again, and I want it to um, load the brush after each stroke. So when I come back in here, what it's going to do is that it looks pretty orangish when I'm done because it's taking the red and it's every time it's doing that, it's mixing it with the yellow. So one more time, and then we'll move on to the photograph and see what we get with that. So I'm going to switch and again. I'm going to select um, the red. Um, what did I want? I want um, for the last one, I got to cheat. I got to look here. Um, oh, I screwed up. I want the yellow and the blue. I messed up. So I want the yellow and the blue. That's what I wanted up here. And I picked it down here. So <clears throat> let me again select blue from my eyedropper. Let's pick um, over here our mixer brush. And I'm going to make sure that we have both of these turned on. And I'm going to mix and paint the blue in here. Okay, um, I'll let select very wet. And then what I'm going to do here is I'm going to, if I want, let's see, uh, clean brush after every stroke. Nope. Um, I want a load brush after every stroke. So now what I can do is if I come back and I get the um, yellow, yellow and blue or green. So I need to pick up the color, my yellow. I didn't want to pick up the brown. I wanted the yellow. There we go. Let's move that over. That's what happens when you click all the way through. And then let's go ahead here and um, again, pick the, the mixer brush. And now we're going to paint in here. Let's see. Do I have blue? No, I didn't pick it up. So let's pick it up. There we go. Now let's go ahead and Try it. No, got to pick it up. There we go. So make sure it doesn't clean after every brush. There we go. So now we're getting the blue and the yellow, and we're winding up with a green. When you look at the over, you know, in the in between here. Okay. So that's um, using the mixer brush to paint, to take existing colors, mix them with others to. Um, create a new palette, just as you would with um, real oil paints or real watercolors or gouache or whatever, um, you know, acrylic, any kind of paint that you choose to use. You have a whole slew of brushes that are available to you. And now when we work on this one here, okay, um, let's see where we're at. We'll have quite a bit of time to, to work on this today. So I'll, I'll work on this for a while, and then we come back on Wednesday. Um, maybe I'll finish it up. We will see. 
So um, this is what it's supposed to look like when we're done. This is what it's supposed to look like or, or what it looks like when we start. Now, the brushes that we're going to use for this, they've already created for us. So to do that, what we want to do is where we have under brushes, I can click right here and I can um, get more brushes or I can import brushes. That's what I want to do. You can close uh, or rather you can um, save uh, individual brushes, the ones that you create on your own, or you can create the, or open the ones that they provided for us. So I'm, I've already done this, but I'll show you where they are. I'm going to go to import brushes, excuse me. And if we look inside lesson 10, you can see that here's a CLB classroom or landscape brushes dot ABR. Um, that is classroom in a book, landscape brushes. And this is your um, Adobe um, extension that you use for Adobe brushes. I've already added them. So now when I come back here and I scroll down inside my brush panel here, actually, I need to go up a little bit. Let's scroll down. Where are you guys? Here we are. They're already open. The CLB landscape brushes right here. We have round fan brushes. We have cloud brushes. And as I roll over each of them, notice how it changes in the brush settings down here. So you can get an idea of what they're going to look like. And each one is labeled for what you're supposed to use it for. But I encourage you to experiment with this. And I'm going to go ahead and start, for example, with the, um, the background, the sky. And um, one of the things that we can do is I can start with a cloud brush. Um, that wouldn't be a bad place to go. And it's already set for us. You can see that it's, it's kind of um, white and it's wet brush and it's allowing us to, you know, click and drag and it's painting in some additional clouds very subtly. Um, okay. What I want to do is I'm going to select the round fan brush, though, like so. And I'm going to, instead of wet, I'm going to try something and I'm going to make it dry and see what we get. And if I click and I drag, you'll notice that when it's dry, because there's nothing in here, nothing happens. So if I go back to wet and I try it, you'll notice that it's starting to. There we go. When I go from blue into the white, notice that it's creating these little streaks. If I go from the, um, the tree into the sky, it's actually with that kind of wet um, bristle. Um, it's it as if we were working on kind of smeary oils. And I can um, begin to soften the edges here. Now, what your goal is going to be later when you're working on your own particular um, <clears throat> uh, um, image is that you're going to want to, um, let's clean the brush here. And um, I'm gonna click and drag in here. And when I do that, I've changed the brush from actually having a color to coming back in and um, smearing the, and, and moving the white into the blue, and the blue into the white, and so on and so forth. I can increase the brush size if I want a little bit and really get kind of a more painterly look. Um, your goal will be to really decimate all of the, um, the information that's given in the photograph. You really don't want to see that when you're done. And you can see that I'm really kind of in the sky, I'm getting rid of most of that and mixing it up a bit so that it has a more painterly kind of brush-like look. And then when we come back, we can work with some other brushes. So I'm gonna work with the sky for just a couple of minutes more. And now what I wanna do, and this was really intended for the green highlight brush for the, the tree, the green grass. 
but by cleaning the brush and then um, just leaving it so that it remixes after each one, I can change it, its properties. Likewise, I can turn on the fact when I, that it's going to mix with and sample all layers. So let me show you what happens when we, um, let's work with the, um, I don't want the green grass highlights, but how about foreground tree, background tree, tree highlights. Let's work with the brown grass here. So this is all a brown grass that we're going to work with. Now, if I can, if I start to paint, you'll notice that they've already created a, a color for us. Um, that if I come in here and let me zoom in a little bit so you can see a little bit better. Okay, so it's sort of a um, a, a burnt sienna, maybe closer to a yellow ochre, I'm not sure. And I can just click and drag in here and proceed to, to paint. Now watch what happens when I sample all layers because it's gonna take from that background and it's gonna mix with it. So now if I could come in here and I paint, notice that it's not that bright red anymore because it's mixing with the background colors from underneath it as well. But if I come back up here and I paint like so, you can see that I can just smear like crazy and go back and forth and paint. And as I said, don't be afraid because we're working on a separate layer. If you wanna actually work, do this on multiple layers instead of just like two or three layers, um, you can. Um, there's a, the, vote, the video that we'll be watching, there's a couple of them by John Deary. And um, he works on multiple layers to get the look that he's going for. Let me go ahead and, uh, and that enables him to come back and to adjust in any number of ways, the painting that he works on and decides what you know, works best for him. So I'm just smearing here, going back and forth. Notice that because it's wet, when I go over the green areas, um, it picks up those colors. And again, that's because I have sample all layers turned on. I'm just painting like crazy back in here. Just, and every time I make a stroke, I let go of the, the mouse so I can come back and um, let it pick up another mixture of color in here. Let's move that over a bit. And you can see I'm really, really decimating the colors on, or the, the t detail underneath. And that's what I want to do for right now. And then I'll switch back and forth to turn sample background colors off to add some brightness to the colors here. And then turn it back on and make the colors a little bit more muted to allow it to pick up some of the, the colors from the background. Let's see what they're doing here. Let's go back. Whoops, I didn't want that one. Let's try. There we go. Okay. So let's come back and let's pick um, maybe a brown from here and paint in here. So you're not restricted to the, the colors that they have chosen. You can come in and you can paint with whatever colors you want. It's going to take me a while. So I'm just smearing colors like crazy here. Okay. Okie doke. So let me work on a different section of this now. Um, again, if we go back to the landscape and we can compare, you can see that they've added these little blades of grass. Well, where are those? They provided a brush for us. So if we scroll down to the bottom here, it says foreground grass brushes. So now what I can do is I can come back up here 
and I can click and drag and I can paint those, you know, those little individual strands of grass in here to give it some detail. Put it back here, put some in the foreground. And before you know it, you know, you created something considerably different than the original photograph. Let's go ahead and add those back in. And again, you can, if you don't like what you're doing, you can always undo. When I'm, when you're done with it, I really don't want to see any remnants of the, uh, the photograph itself. I want all of that to be obliterated. So I've worked on the foreground for a little bit. Let me go back to the background a little, in the background tree. So let me come back up and we have tree hot background trees brush. So I'm going to work with that one. I might come back again. And let's go back here. And let's work with that a little bit. And let's go ahead and I don't need to sample all layers for that one. But again, I want to decimate the details of the um, the tree itself, the details, you know, the fine details, the concentrated details that you get in a photograph. And just leave it with a hint of this is, you know, what sort of looks like a tree, or maybe it's just kind of a cluster of, of um, you know, abstract brush marks. I really don't care. I want you to experiment and to play with it and to get, you know, a nice, uh, much freer look to the whole thing. You know, have fun with it. That's what I hope that you'll do with your um, final project. So there's the base color. Now let's go with the tree highlights. That was the background tree. That's the foreground. Let's try that back here. So I'll add some yellows back in here. For the highlights in that tree back there. Now we can work on, you know, go back to the foreground if we want. Um, I can work with them. Um, let's see. Let's work with them um, green grass highlight brush. So I'm going to work in here. And let's work in here for a little bit. Or as I said, we can always, we can, we don't have to adhere to the brushes that they've used. We can always use some others like the fan brush and we can strip away some of the details using other brushes instead. And that might be better, but we, again, we want to decimate. Um, whoop, 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 whoop. Oh my God, what happened here? Um, all of my layers went away. Let me undo a few steps and see what happened. All of my layers went away. I don't know what happened. I'm going to undo a whole bunch. Well, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to work on a brand new layer. There we go. So I did something that caused it to um, eliminate all the layers that I had. And that's not good. But like, you know, typical to me when I'm talking to you, I'm not paying attention to the details and that's where I screw up. So let's go ahead and I'm gonna add some more of these highlights in here. And then I'm gonna come back with a different brush and um, Again, just decimate, doesn't have to be a perfect edge there. Come back in here, we can combine both highlights as well as the, the middle tone of the dark grass and that sort of thing. We can come back in the middle of our tree and add some highlights in there. 
I'm having a hard time, by the way, seeing my brush kind of disappears on me. There we go. Draw it here, here a little bit, here. Smoosh it around in here a little bit. And now let's switch and let's sample all layers again. Okay, now we can come back and we can. And I'm going to also, I don't want it to continue to pick up. I want it to um, mix with the with the colors underneath, not clean the brush every time. So that's what you're going to have to do is kind of experiment a little bit. Let's come back over here. And there's a way of painting that John Deary will work. And you really don't need to work with any colors at all. What we're doing is we're going to take and we're going to smear the colors using different um, brushes to create, um, you know, work with the existing composition, work with the existing colors of our, our photograph. But by changing the texture of it, we get kind of an, an alternate painterly look. And I really kind of like that a lot. Let me see, oh, I'm losing sight of my brush here. There we go. So kind of paint in here a little bit. You know, bring some of the blue of the sky into the the tree and vice versa. Take some of the the paint that you would use in the tree and bring it into the sky. Um, create kind of a nice impressionist that look that you would see in a Monet or um, Picasso, well, not Picasso, he wasn't. Uh, Picasso was not uh, an Impressionist painter, but maybe a Van Gogh. And there we go. Just keep working it. And if you don't like it, this is not taking me that long. You can really, you know, play with it and do a variety of, of versions for yourself. And again, you know, after you do this enough, and while I'm online with you, my computer slows down a bit. So, yeah. So that's pretty much it um, for today. And then when you tweak it long enough, you'll wind up getting something that looks a bit like this. So I've just started and I've worked maybe 20 minutes on it. And I have a lot more to do with the trees, you know, some fine tuning of the, the middle ground, maybe play with the, um, the sky a bit more. Um, I like working with the round brush here with wet and just Let's go ahead and not sample. Yeah, see how it's slowing down and I make a stroke and then it takes a while for it to catch up. That's not what you want. Yeah, you want it to work in real time, but that's the nature of doing working with this. And eventually that will happen. It will you know, bog down and it won't be as fun to work with it. Okay. There we go. So I've got off to a good start. And, you know, when we're all done, I have that. Now, advantage to this is that um, when we're working, even when you're working with print, for print, um, with the brush mixer, um, you don't need to be working at a high resolution. You can start with a photograph that's a low resolution image. And um, because the the detail of the pixels in the photograph, um, the density of those pixels is being decimated. You can always come back um, <clears throat> and, and add detail if you wish, but um, it's really not dependent on resolution the way it is with photographs. 
So you can create a nice image with 72 pixels per inch. It doesn't have to be any higher than that. That's one of the few times in Photoshop that you can work at a, um, uh, with a low res image. Um, that's another advantage to working here. The piece that, you, that you'll be working on in a, in a couple of weeks will be um, eight by 10 is fine, vertical or horizontal. Um, you can also work um, with a, a landscape. It could be a still life, it could be a portrait. Um, there's lots of examples that I have to show you. I only have one on my website that's kind of a contemporary bar scene um, illustration, but there are lots of them that I found online that um, I want you to take a look at and decide for yourself um, what you want to, to do, an approach you want to take. Um, you're more than welcome to do more than one because they really don't take that long to do. You don't, when you're working from a photograph, that is, and digitizing it and turning it into a painting, you don't have to worry about composition. You don't have to worry about color. The only thing that you need to worry about is the detail and the texture involved. And this is, gives you a little bit more of a tactile feeling to your, to your work than um, then it happens with um, photographs. Photographs are usually kind of slick and high detailed, high contrast. These can be, you know, altogether very, very different um, and have, is, is what I hope, is a more painterly look that you'll, you'll be getting with them. Okay, so that's um, all that I wanted to, to cover today, unless you guys have any questions about um, Lesson 10. And as I said, probably uh, on, on Wednesday, we'll start watching some videos um, on this very technique, um, working with a still life, in fact. And um, he works not only with Photoshop, but he works with another program called Painter. It was designed to do just this, um, so you can get an idea of um, maybe you know something that you'll want to work on for your project. Okay. If there aren't any questions, then I'm going to pause the recording and I'm going to say goodbye, and you guys are free to leave. Okay. That's it. Um, no questions. No. Okay. Bye-bye.